In this video, we solve problem 15.2.012 from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions textbook, 7th edition. The problem statement says, consider the following. A C is a curve. It's counterclockwise around the circle, given by x squared plus y squared equals 9 from this point to this point on the circle. In part A, we're asked to find a parameterization of the path C. And we're told r of t equals blank, and we're asked to fill in that blank. And we're told that t should go from 0 to pi. That's really important um, in defining our parameterization. And then we're asked to evaluate the line integral of x squared plus y squared over the path c. So the first thing that I would do on this is sketch that path c. And it's not too difficult. We're told that C is part of the circle of radius 3 centered at the origin given by x squared plus y squared equals 9. So here's that circle. And it's actually not the whole circle. Um, C is just part of this circle. And it says we're starting at the point x equals 3, y equals 0. And then we're going counterclockwise around this circle to x equals negative 3, y equals 0. It's actually just the top half of the circle. And we might represent it like that. So that is our path. Okay, so now that we have a sketch of the path, we're going to find a parameterization of the path C. Now, this is a path in the plane, so we know that that parameterization should have components x of t and y of t, and we're told that t should range from 0 to pi. And I think that we can all see that if I were, say, in polar coordinates, theta would be 0 over here and theta would be pi over here. Um, so if I choose x and y to involve sine and cosine of t, that will get me from this point to this point. Now, if this was on the unit circle, where x squared plus y squared equals 1, x would be cosine of t and y would be sine of t. So I can start with that. Um, but we're not on the unit circle. We're on a circle of radius 3, not radius 1. So x actually goes from negative 3 to 3, and y actually goes from negative 3 to 3 as well. In order for that to happen, we multiply this cosine of t and sine of t by 3. Now our x values have the right range. We have the right range of x values. We have the correct range of y values. And this squared plus this squared would give us that 9. Um, and when t equals 0, we've got 3 times cosine of 0, which is 3, and 3 times sine of 0, which is 0. So when t equals 0, r of 0 is 3, 0. That's where we want to start. That's good. And when t equals pi, we've got 3 times cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1, so 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and sine of pi is 0. Um, so this is the correct parameterization. If you prefer, you can also write it this way. I prefer component form. I think it's much simpler. But these are equivalent to each other. So either one of those is fine. Now in part B, you're just asked to evaluate the line integral. Now remember how this works. We've got way too many variables here. I've got x's, I've got y's, I've got s, I've got c. We need one variable to tie all of the other variables together. And the vi variable that we're using to tie all the variables together with line integrals is this variable t. If we're on this path, x of t is given by 3 cosine of t, and y of t is given by 3, three sine of t. Um, so uh, we can replace x with this and y with this. ds, remember that is like if this was a position function, ds is a tiny distance traveled, so this would be speed times time. So it would be the magnitude of the velocity vector times time. So we're going to substitute this 
can write it in terms of t, we've got to substitute this and write it in terms of t. And then instead of saying we're going to integrate over c, we're going to let t go from one value to another. Um, so just in general, let me write the formula down. If this is where we start at t equals a and we stop at t equals b, we would evaluate the integral from a to b of our original function. If this is f of x, y, this will be f of x of t, y of t. Because when we are on this path, x can be given by 3 cosine of t and y is given by 3 sine of t. So you write um, this function in terms of t only by making a substitution. And then ds, the tiny distance, that's the magnitude of r prime of t times dt. I tend to think of this as the magnitude of the velocity or the speed times time, giving me a little distance. It just helps me remember it. Okay, so we need the two bounds. We need a new integrand or a new version of this integrand that was given. And then we need to compute r prime and find its magnitude. Let's do the new integrand first. I think we already know what the answer is f of x, y was x squared plus y squared. We could replace x with 3 cosine of t and y with 3 sine of t and simplify. That's what we would do in general. And let's just do it for example. And then you've got a product, so you want to square each of those factors separately. Square the 3, square the cosine. Square the 3, square the sine. Factor out the 9, and then you say, hey, look, cosine squared plus sine squared, that's a 1. Isn't that nice? So x squared plus y squared equals 9. That is our new um, integrand, so we're going to replace that right there with a 9. Now, if you're saying to yourself, couldn't I just skip that because x squared plus y squared equals 9 when we're on that curve, you're absolutely right. We could have just said this equals 9, and we could have been done. But in general, you won't have something that this quantity involving x and y, you won't automatically know what it is in terms of t. So you would substitute your x of t and y of t and simplify. So we've got new integrand in terms of t, which happens to not just explicitly depend on t. It's just a 9. And then we need the magnitude of r prime. So we need to compute r prime and its magnitude. The x component of r was 3 cosine of t. The derivative of 3 cosine of t is negative 3 sine of t. Remember, when you take the derivative of a vector valued function, you just take the derivative component by component. Take the derivative of this guy, and then we take the derivative of that guy. Derivative of 3 sine of t is 3 cosine of t. And then you want the magnitude of this. You might already know that the magnitude of that vector is 3. Um, let's prove it. Remember when you're taking the magnitude of a vector, you take the components, you square them, add them, and take the square root. So we square the negative 3, we square the sine. Square the 3, square the cosine. Factor out the 9. And then you say, hey, there's sine squared t plus cosine squared t. That's equal to 1. Angles are the same. You get 1. Square root of 9 is, of course, 3. Um, so the magnitude of this vector is 3, which I think some of us probably already knew because of the sine and the cosine. OK, so you've got this piece and you've got this piece and the appropriate bounds are actually given to you t goes from zero to pi so now we'll just substitute all of those in and evaluate the integral so the line integral over c of x squared plus y squared ds is the integral from zero to pi of the integrand which is now a nine times the magnitude of r prime which is three times dt 
So I'm just taking the antiderivative of 27 with respect to t, which is just 27t. And then we evaluate from t equals 0 to t equals pi. And we get 27 pi minus 27 times 0, which is 0. And that's our answer. That's the value of the line integral.